Hello and welcome to the Networking Basics mini lecture series. In this mini lecture we will solve together the practical lab exam. More precisely this video demonstrates the configuration commands that are used to implement the networking topology based on uh, the addressing scheme. On the left hand side we see uh, the results of uh, steps 1, 2 and 3, specifically the results of subnetting uh, the 172.16.0 slash 16 address where the subnet address is 172.16.28.0 and here in number three uh, we show uh, the assignments of the address to our network topology. We will now begin the configuration of our network based on our uh, calculations of the previous steps. Before we start anything uh, we will enter our name in the packet tracer options user profile. Setting our user profile name results in any previous configuration steps uh, to be lost. Therefore, it is critical that these be done uh, as the uh, before any configuration uh, begins. Otherwise, uh, any configuration steps that are done uh, before entering the user profile will all be lost. Now on to step six, uh, specifically the cabling of our network devices. Let's proceed with 6A, that is connect your workstation to port 1 on the switch, B, connect FA0 on the router to port 2 on the same switch, step C, connect FA01 on the router to port 2 of the network access switch. Step D, connect, select a console cable uh, to connect from COM1, which implements RS-232, to the console port on the router. Recall that connecting an Ethernet port to a console port will not work. Now let's proceed to step 7 and before we can perform step 7 we must first uh, open up the terminal emulator allowing us to issue commands uh, to the router uh, via our console connection. So let's start with the first command here, which is enter privilege exec. This is done by entering the enable command. Enter configuration mode. Config tab T. Assign host name to router 1. Restrict access to privileged executive with encrypted password Cisco. Enter config mode for console. Assign the password Cisco. and allow logins. What we have just done is protected or next time we attempt to access the console port we will be prompted for a password which we have set at Cisco. 
Now let's proceed with configuring Telnet line 0 through 4. Line VTY, virtual terminal, 0 through 4. Password Cisco. And allow logins. Now we are entering config mode for interface FA00. Specifying uh, the IP address for this interface and the subnet mask. Little typo here. One too many octets. And by default, every interface is down. Therefore, we must uh, bring uh, the interface up. And these two messages, uh, these two console messages, are a very good indication showing that uh, the, the interface change uh, the interface changed uh, its state to up as well as the line protocol has a change state to up. Now let's configure let's configure FA01 And according to our addressing scheme, FA01 has an IP address of 31 or 205.5.5.31 with a subnet mask uh, of a slash 24. And again, let's bring up the interface. And here uh, we have two messages, uh, two encouraging messages both indicating that uh, interface F801 is up both physic uh, at the physical layer and at the data link layer. Now we're going to set up a default route In order to define a default route, we must be in global configuration mode. So, let's exit the config mode and show IP interface brief which provides uh, for each interface uh, a quick summary the, uh, the IP address uh, the status and in both uh, uh, if we should have any of these uh, statuses uh, being down, uh, then this would be an indication of a uh, of a problem or malfunction on uh, any of uh, or on that specific interface. Now to display the routing table, we issue the show IP route, and here the the highlighted portion is showing the uh, the routing table which consists of exactly three entries uh, the C entries correspond uh, to the directly connected interfaces so for each interface uh, we will have a directly connected entry and here's our our default route uh, which shows up as a, a NES 
or a static route or a manually entered by the administrator. So for any for any packet that doesn't match uh, or for any packet that doesn't have an exact match in the routing table uh, they will be routed uh, to the other default route if it exists at via this next hop address now let's display the complete configuration via the show running config the show running config provides uh, the active con configuration provides the output of what we have in RAM what we all of the changes that we have just implemented are active uh, they are in RAM only if we wanted to preserve them we would have to issue the copy running config to the startup config and uh, you may recall that the startup config is stored in NVRAM therefore any power when the router is uh, is powered down uh, uh, copying our active or all of our running config changes uh, or all the changes that we made from running config to startup config will ensure that when the uh, router is restarted that all of our changes will be preserved Now the next command is ping 205.5.5.254. So we're verifying that everything's functioning, uh, which it has. Uh, over here in the first ping, we see that we have an 80% success rate. So four out of five uh, of the uh, ping requests were successful. Uh, the first one was unsuccessful uh, because we were uh, uh, when we first the first ping uh, was issued and uh, it timed out uh, due to uh, all of the ARP cache tables uh, or cache entries being primed. Uh, the second uh, ping is 11.0.0.1 again the first one fails on this one but providing that all subsequent ones are a hundred percent we are safe to assume that the configuration is good uh, ping 12001 again the first one oh, all good and then we are at step eight, which is uh, configuring the workstation. So we exit to the console terminal and at the workstation, select the IP configuration. Uh, the IP, uh, looking at the diagram down here, the IP address for our workstation is 172.16.28.1. With a subnet mask of slash 22, which is a 255.255.252.0. Default gateway for this network is 16.172.16.31.254. And the DNS server, according to the network topology, is uh, 11. Dot zero dot zero dot one. Actually, if we go back up here, yeah, there it is right there. Eleven dot zero dot zero dot one. All right, we're done configuring the uh, IP parameters uh, for our workstation. Uh, next, to uh, verify that the workstation can ping its gateway so from the command prompt let's see if we can ping the gateway uh, 
0.16.31.254 yeah bingo uh, ping 205 205 not 5 not 5 not 5 dot oops finger problems here dot 254 yeah very good 11.0.0.1 12.0.0.1 and finally we're going to verify that we can resolve names to IP addresses from our workstation and bingo it worked so the next step uh, number C or 8C is uh, rec record the commands that to do the following from the command prompt on the workstation uh, so display the IP configuration via IP config do a trace route to 12 not the zero zero one yeah and this shows uh, number of hops to twelve zero zero one we have exactly two hops so our router here and the router over here so we have exactly two hops to our destination And finally, uh, step number nine, use packet tracers check results feature to make sure you have successfully completed the exercise. And if we do the check results. Oh, congratulations on completing this activity. We have uh, all of the assessment items having uh, uh, green check marks. Any items uh, that were incorrect would have a red X. And our connectivity tests are all good. They're all showing a status of correct. And uh, close this. And we have a completion rate of exactly 100%. So we've done uh, very good. 100%. Uh, just a, uh, a side note that uh, in the final exam, uh, the uh, the in lab exam, uh, the assessment items will be will be uh, disabled. Therefore, you will not be able to see uh, what what you've uh, uh, succeeded uh, or which items uh, are failed in the the final. Uh, skills-based exam uh, although you do not have uh, access to the assessment items you will you will know uh, by testing uh, you will have a number a series of tests to conduct to verify that your configuration is successful you will perform connectivity tests and have the cough if the connectivity tests succeed then you can uh, you can conclude that your configuration was successful.